Some of the earliest instruments in the world in general are the rattle, the drum, and the flute. The drum is an excellent accompaniment to a flute because it has that earthy quality, it has that rhythm to it. And so the drums in general are, th these particular drums are, um, the hides are natural, obviously. And so like all natural materials, they're not perfect. So in other words, you have some irregularities. It's, you know, they're not plastic. That's the good news. So. I wanted to kind of get the sense of the drums in terms of what they sound like. This is a 13-inch drum, <clears throat> and here's its voice. And it has several tonal um, qualities to it, tonal areas. If you play it in the center, it's a little deeper. If you play it the outside, it's much higher, and in between. quite a bit and you don't always have to use a, um, a drumstick you can use your hand just make sure you don't have any rings on there so don't, don't damage the hide so it makes it a little bit softer snapping your finger a little bit using your snap or just dead hand slow you can you can speed it up you can kind of make it slow <clears throat> so the drums really accompany flutes exceptionally well because they set the rhythm that you can get to and the ideal ideally when you're playing a drum especially if you're playing with other instruments is to stay in tempo and it's good to kind of just you know move your foot along with it so you can get the same timing to it This is a 13 inch drum. The next size that we have is a 16 inch drum. <clears throat> it's quite a bit bigger looking, you know, but it is, it's only three inches bigger in diameter, but it looks quite a bit bigger. It has a totally different tonal quality. It's a little deeper. Again, it's got the, the different areas of voice. So the drums, because they're a natural skin, <clears throat> they are affected by the, te by the environment that they're in. <clears throat> so if you have a lot of humidity, they absorb the humidity and they can sound kind of dead. So uh, in Arizona and in, in the Southwest in general, uh, it's much drier climate, not always. In the summer we get the monsoon season, so we get rains and the flutes get a little, the, I'm sorry, the, the drums get a little bit deader sounding. You don't ever want the, these drums to be in direct sunlight because then they could dry out really fast and they crack and they just literally split. So, and they're very powerful. They, they just shrink and they can actually crush the frame. So don't keep them in your car. You know, if you're going to transport them, put them over a blanket over them or whatever, <clears throat> whatever, something just to isolate them from direct sunlight. So when it's really dry out, they have a real nice crisp sound. Right now, this is really crisp. If you have more humidity, they absorb the moisture and they tend to have a little bit deader sound. And sometimes they get real dead, like if you're in a state that has a high humidity, you get, it gets really dead to the point you go, man, my drum's not playing anymore, you know? So when, what you can do uh, in that case is to go ahead and dry it out a little bit. And you have to be very careful when you do that, though. I, I've used a hair dryer before, and I keep it like far away and just really slowly and on low just to, to, to dry it out a little bit. So be careful with that, though, because if you overdo it, it's going to hurt the skin. So, And that's the, 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 the aspect to a high drum. They have a wonderful, natural, earthy tone to them, but they are flexible, so they are going to change. So. If you're in the mood, get yourself a drum. It's kind of fun to play along with the flute, or the flute along with the drum. <laughs>